Um, good afternoon. I'm actually going to have the presentation uh, in English because it's, it's actually my first language, although I have uh, Polish parents. Um, firstly, I would like to thank the Institute and also the Theatre Academy and the students uh, for, this, for this chance to talk about uh, our work together on this project, which was called Illusions. Um, initially, at our school, which is the Polish-Japanese Academy of Theatre Technology, uh, myself, with the guidance from Professor Eva Satletska, uh, we run what is called a UX design studio, which is basically user experience design. Now, uh, usually the projects that, that we do together with the students uh, do not uh, move outside of the realm of design, we could say. User experience design is about creating uh, or solutions for problems in relation to design. Now, this time when we had the first meeting from the representatives, sorry, uh, from the theatre uh, academy, we were given a brief. It was, uh, uh, I think, three or four people came to, to speak to us that there is a student's performance of puppet theatre around 24, 25 minutes long, uh, which is already complete. But there was uh, uh, something missing, maybe, or there was something that, that they wanted to improve or to add. For me, this is quite interesting. Uh, my actual background is in the theatre. I studied theatre performance in Australia, theatre direction. So it was also an opportunity to, to work on this. Um, but one of the initial, I guess, um, ideas that came up is why isn't it enough just for the actors or for the objects to exist? Why do they feel that there is a lack that they need to incorporate a multimedia aspect? So after the initial couple of meetings, of course, a lot of questions came up, as you can see. These are a lot of questions that designers ask, and this is one of the things that we also teach our students, particularly in the first couple of meetings uh, when working on a project, is that it's, it's really your responsibility to, to find out as much as you can. Now, out of those questions, a lot of those questions were about ideas, and what I have found in, uh, in my time at the academy is that a lot of those ideas that come up tend to be, sorry, tend to be about how to find a solution straight away. Young people, students are very quick in finding ideas almost as visual images that are already complete. Now this is something that I actually think is the wrong way to approach working. So, out of all of the solutions of how to do, one of the things that I tend to like to focus on with my students is to find this question, what do you want to say in your work? What is it that you want to say? It may not be an answer, it may be a question of what do you want to do, yes? What are the things that are moving you in your work? So we kind of narrow it down to this question. Now in terms of the, the structure of how we move away from solutions to finding questions of what we want to do or what moves us to do, uh, I often tend to rely back on philosophical texts. In this case, one of the texts that came up in the work that we were thinking about was a text by a Czech philosopher. This was written 
in the 80s. It's from a book called in the, Into the Universe of Technical Images. Willem Flusser, who was really interested in this idea of communication and new media. New media, and we're talking about the 80s, where the internet is just a rumor at that stage. And yet, he found that there is something that's going to come through with this, with this new idea of connecting, new idea of the promise that computers and technology are providing. In this short fragment, and I'm not going to read it out loud, you can read it, but there is two things that interested me. This idea of a traditional image versus a technical image. Now, for William Flusser, this idea of a traditional image was something, yes, of an observation of an object. So, basically, a traditional image is a representation of an idea. Whilst the techno technological or technical image, I actually called it a technological image, tends to be a representation of a concept. So it tends to be a representation of, a, uh, of an abstract idea of numbers, which we then somehow put together and interpret in a particular way. So these two spheres were somehow resonating on the work on this project because what we had was live images that somehow the actors or the, um, or the artists wanted to introduce another multimedia aspect. So we have traditional representation, yes, versus a technical image which tends to be tends to rely on an idea of a concept. So what we did, we had a recording of the, of the live performance. There was also a meeting with, uh, with the actors, the artists. And uh, our group began with translating some of those representations into concepts. So that those images that were produced on stage what were they telling us? Yes, what, 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 what concepts were they touching? And we know that concepts generate meanings. We also know from the post-structuralists and later that concepts generate many meanings. So one of the meanings that we were not interested in was that we did not want to create images which were a representation of the technology. So we didn't want, we didn't want to make this an experiment of uh, where, we are, where we are in terms of technology or how, um, how technology is possible in today's world. This was something that was not of our interest. What we were interested in was about images or creating images that were also somehow touching something outside of just the visible. So we narrowed it down to this idea that if we concentrate on the concept of what we want to say, maybe it's a utopian idea, that it will somehow trigger us into generating images and then we can reflect back on technology how we can do it. So initially, and these are the sketches by one of the students uh, that was working, Wojciech Pudowski. As you can see, these are very much uh, conceptual Ideas, no meanings maybe as uh, at present, but we were just working very much on this idea of generating as many things as possible of the question of what you want to say out of the material given before we even spoke, before we even thought about the technology that we could use. And we are in Arts New Media School, 
but we tend to push the students into doing a lot of drawings. Each student has a journal, uh, an arts journal, where they have to present, even in English classes or semiotics classes that I run with the students, they do have to draw. So they have to somehow visualize concepts. So out of this visualization of, of concepts, some clear ideas were coming around. No technology yet. After ha having to generate lots of these ideas, lots of these sketches, yes, we were looking for solutions. And what we had found was that in order to show, in order to illustrate some of these concepts, we, we didn't really have to move too far into technology. Yes, that what we could really use was the screen, we could use simple images, animations, and one of the things that we had found was that in the original piece, the use of light was very important. And we said that we do want to keep this element. One of the difficulties that we had as a question earlier on is, do we create a separate narrative or do we add to the ideas that are already generated in the original performance? And we oscillated between these two spheres, and I think we moved closer to this idea of expanding on the ideas that were already being generated in the original performance. So, out of very simple concepts, we began to somehow illustrate another layer of what's already on stage. So from that, we moved on to the hard work, and that is to try to choose particular elements or particular fragments out of the performance that we felt that we could somehow expand on the original concept with our own idea. This is a basic timeline. As you can see, it's a little bit more organized. So the f this final question, which, uh, which I would like to probably address, is why have this approach? Why have this approach where you really step back and really think about what you want to say before you actually use the tools in a way? One of the reasons, I guess, is that I have found that the moment when you generate ideas straight away earlier on, it becomes a repetition basically of things that you already know or something that's already done. And that when we step back and allow the students to really think about what they want to say, something new may arise. I'm not sure if it's going to be successful. This is probably for you to judge because you will see the performance later today. But I think that focus on forcing the students to think about what they really want to say rather than just to make it an aesthetic presentation of technology. Thank you.